In this video, I'll make my first ever dress on my new vintage Singer 66K. The process will be filled with novelty, not just for Pinky over here, but also for me, because I still don't know how to backstitch on the sewing machine. So please wish me good luck. And yes, it's uh, 2022 and I am still cutting my fabric out on the floor. Please don't judge, space limitations are a real struggle over here, all right? But anyway, today I'll make a comfortable, short, shirt dress. I don't have the footage of making the pattern, sadly. Uh, that's because this was my first time draping a dress with that kind of a color and honestly, I did not think it would work out at all. So I didn't plan on recording it and I didn't plan on making a video about it but luckily the pattern turned out more or less as I hoped. There are some minor changes I need to make around the collar and the facing as well as the bust area but other than that I'm quite happy with how it turned out so I'm gonna go ahead and make the dress. And if you're interested to see how it turned out please watch till the end of the video and see the final result. The construction of this dress is quite simple. I start by putting the sleeve right sides together and sewing the underarm seam in both sleeves. I still struggle with getting my machine started and getting into the rhythm of the treadle, especially because I'm used to holding my fabric with both of my hands at all times. But here, you have to use one hand to start the wheel. And the same goes for backstitching. I saw some great tutorial on how to backstitch on a machine that doesn't have a backstitch built in, but that again requires me to take my hands off of the fabric and I'm so unused to that, it feels so unnatural. Almost everything about sewing on a treadle machine is novel to me, but I love the process of acquainting myself with this machine. And by the way, so does Pinky. He's been staring at the machine almost the whole day with me. He loves watching the small parts of the machine go up and down. And of course, uh, he loves watching the thread. He loves catching the thread. And I feel like lately half of my job is just making sure that he doesn't eat anything that he shouldn't. But anyway, back to the subject of the dress construction. What I love about this dress is the fact that it doesn't have any waistline seam. That's fantastic, not only for the ease of the construction, because it's very quick and easy uh, to make, because you don't have to connect skirt pieces with bodice pieces, but also when it comes to the comfort of wearing it. I have recently put on weight and I feel like all the clothing that has a waistline seam is biting my tummy. I mean, how rude is that? <laughs> so having a dress that doesn't have any waistline seam is extremely comfortable for me now. And the fullness at the waistline uh, of the dress is gathered with the big dart both on the front piece and the back piece of the dress. Couldn't get any more simple than that. It was a bit challenging for me to sew those darts because I'm, I was still struggling with the backstitch, but other than that, it was a really quick task. I also added a bust dart to the dress and after that, I was ready to start connecting my front and back pieces. And then, you know, by the time you connect front and back of the dress, it begins to look like a dress. There is one thing I always wished someone told me when I just started sewing, which is you do not have to pin your pattern pieces every centimeter or every half a centimeter. You don't have to over pin even those really long seams, like for example here the long side seam of the dress. If you hold your fabric properly, the feed dogs are not going to ease in the, the fabric piece below uh, or the pattern piece below and they'll still be equal lengths. So there is no need for overpinning and pricking yourself every two minutes while sewing. Anyways, that was my mini rant and now I am sewing the color of the dress, which was really challenging on this sewing machine because you know, I wanted to have a neat little backstitch and uh, 
neat corner but that requires a very good control of your sewing machine which I do not have yet on this sewing machine so yeah it was a little bit of a trial and error process but I think I got there in the end and the collar still turned out okay it is and if if you're unfamiliar with making a collar right now I just put two collar pieces right sides together so what you see is the interface uh, wrong side of the fabric and I am sewing the two color pieces together and after I'm done uh, sewing all around the color I will have to flip it to the right side another thing I wish someone told me earlier is not to clip your corners when flipping a corner out uh, because if you clip that corner there will be nothing supporting the co corner once you flip your flip your piece to the right side but if you leave those corners and fold them on top of each other you will get a really neat and crisp corner anyway I'm done talking about crisp corners <laughs> now I'm doing the facings here I'm just sewing the facings right sides together at the shoulder seam or a, cor or a seam corresponding to the shoulder seam and once I'm done with that I'm gonna press those seams gently and I'll have to match the facing to the dress right sides together and I'll pin the facing to the dress in the most crucial points to help myself to help me orient myself on the dress because it is going to be a quite a long seam to get through because I'll be sewing from the bottom of the hem of the on the front of the dress to the collar around the neckline here I'm pinning the shoulder seams all the way down to the other side of the collar and down to the hem on the other side of the dress. This long stitch was a great opportunity for me to get into the rhythm of the sewing machine and get some control over it because I also had to hit those narrow corners in the exact specific point and turn and start the machine again so it was great practice and I feel like by the time I was done with it I was much better at controlling this sewing machine so anyway all I had to do here was go all around the front of the dress from one hem through the neckline to the other side of the dress to the hem after that I flipped the facing to the right side and I did a little bit of under stitching of the facing to the front of the dress not all around the dress just at the front of the dress where the buttons would go and after that I was ready to put in my sleeves so that was a really quick and easy task and you can see here that you will not need a free arm to um, to install your sleeve so now I'll just pin the sleeve in the most crucial points like underarm seam meeting the side seam as well as the notches on the arm side and the top of the sleeve will have to meet my shoulder seam so I'm gonna put a pin in there too I will attach the sleeve to the arm side by putting the sleeve towards the feet dogs so they are the fabric piece facing the feet dogs on the bottom and uh, any fullness that's in the top of the sleeve will be just eased in by the feet dog so I don't need to do any gathering stitches and nothing fancy just straight stitch all around the arm side once I'm done with both uh, sleeves with attaching both of the sleeves all I'm gonna do is a simple the most simple double hem all around the sleeve all around the sleeve hem I use the width of the uh, serging that I have done on the on the hem of the sleeve for measurement and I'm just folding it upon itself creating a double hem and I go all around the sleeve piece by piece I sew a little bit stop fold the sleeve and do it again and after I'm done with the sleeves I'll hem my dress so here you've seen me folding the um, the facing towards the the hem of the dress and uh, the hem of the dress the same story as the sleeves just a simple plain double folded hem all around the dress
And once I was done hemming my dress, which took almost no time because it's a very small dress, it was time for the fun part, which was putting in the buttonholes. It is usually the fun part for me, but this time my sewing machine decided there, uh, there has been an error because I chose a slightly bit more fancy buttonhole than usually and after making just one buttonhole it just said no, no, no thank you, not today and I spent two hours just trying to figure out what was the error, what was causing the issue the sewing machine said that it detects like a bunched up thread underneath the feed dogs but there was nothing and I unscrewed all the parts of the sewing machine like five times just to figure out what happened and in the end all it needed it was a restart <laughs> so that's that it's so it's just so ironic that the 104 years old sewing machine standing here is more reliable than the super uber expensive sewing machine uh, super expensive modern sewing machine that I have it's not only more reliable but I also feel like it sews better as well it has way better straight stitch and I'm actually planning to buy uh, an old sewing or older sewing machine that doesn't have any electronics in it that will be able to do to do a few fancy stitches some zigzag and buttonholes because I just feel like the modern sewing machines are not as reliable and it's just sad that I spent all the, all that money on my Faf Creative sewing machine and I, I don't even like it. <laughs> I mean, it's a cool sewing machine. It can do embroidery and stuff, but I never know when it will decide that this is not her day. <laughs> and, and what's saddest about it is that once it breaks down and if it's no longer on the guarantee, um, there will probably be no one who will be able to fix it. It will just go to the landfill. Whereas slightly older sewing machines, they can run forever. I even had one, uh, well, I, can, I don't think I can call her a friend, but a follower from Instagram calling it, uh, calling the vintage sewing machine bomb proof. And I think she was onto something, you know? But anyway, this is the final result. <laughs> I hope you enjoyed the video and if you did, please uh, let me know. Give it a thumbs up as they say on YouTubes. And take care. Thank you so much for watching.